Has there ever been a point in your life where you feel like you've heard something or someone, but you don't physically see that person, but you think it mentally? Now, anytime you think of someone hearing voices, it's some random person going on about their daily life. But what about a professional driver, as in the heat of the moment, deciding to get out of their car and quit? Well, that's what Bobby Isaac did. Throughout the 75 year history of NASCAR, there have been numerous reasons why drivers have decided to end their careers. Some end their career due to age, others due to injuries, and then there's some that retire for no reason at all. But for one driver in 1973, it was for an entirely different and unpleasant reason. This is a story of Bobby Isaac hearing voices. By 1973, Bobby up to this point in his career had already established himself as a top NASCAR driver, winning the 1970 championship with his iconic Beaming Beach Orange number 71 Plymouth for K&K Insurance Racing. He won 37 races, including 11 that year, and 48 career polls. But by 1973, he found himself driving the number 15 Blue and White Ford Torino for Bud Moore Engineering. This is the Alabama International Motor Speedway in Talladega, Alabama. An extremely high banked two and six tenths mile course. The fastest and considered by some to be the most awesome speed arena on earth. Today it offers another challenge and the finest stock car drivers in the country are here to accept it. It was August 12th, 1973. The Talladega Super Speedway was hosting the Talladega 500 for the 20th race of the season. 56,000 people were on hand to see white knuckle flat out racing with 50 of NASCAR's Winston Cup drivers ready to battle out for 500 miles. But while there was a ton of excitement, there was also the anticipation of fear and danger. Three months prior in the Winston 500 at Talladega saw numerous drivers receive injuries and some more graphic receive extraordinary lacerations to their bodies including Wendell Sky, who was forced to retire from racing as a result of his crash. So going into the race in August, the tension was high. The race would see 64 lead changes between 15 different drivers and saw 7 cautions. But just like the race in May, tragedy would strike again in Alabama. This time, it was fatal. Larry Smith was a Navy veteran and the 1972 Winston Cup Rookie of the Year. His car was covered in an advertising in a manner we see now every Sunday. His sponsor, Carling Black Label, was not just using the car for advertising. They wanted to create a brand image using auto racing. He was very concerned about how his sponsor was being presented while other drivers could care less. Much like modern drivers, he depended on financial support from sponsors to continue racing in a time when most sponsors were local car dealerships. The then 31-year-old had only competed in 38 Cup Series starts with 9 top 10 finishes. Smith qualified 35th out of the 50 drivers competing in this race. But in his 1971 Mercury car, he cut a tire somewhere around lap 12 or 13 of the race. He then ran a lap or two on the inner liner. Maybe didn't realize the tire went down. Nevertheless, on lap 14, the inner liner blew and he hit the first turn wall head on with the right front of the car at an estimated speed of 180 miles per hour. The car proceeded to then roll along the wall for more than 100 yards before rolling down to the apron. What seemed to be a normal crash ended up killing Smith before medical staff even approached his car. The force of the accident was strong enough to break the headrest on his seat. Smith had a special safety harness that was attached to the headrest, and when it broke, the harness became untouched. With no harness, Smith hit the dashboard of the car with his forehead and died of massive head injuries. A later report in 1975 went into further detail about Smith's autopsy, stating that doctors determined that Smith's skull was abnormally soft and that it had been fractured several times before his fatal accident. However, even with this new information, there has been no report suggesting that Smith would have survived if his skull wasn't quote, abnormally soft, according to doctors. But okay, what does this have to do with Bobby Isaac? While on lap 90, after the fatal accident of Larry Smith, he stated that something told him to quit like he was hearing voices telling him to stop right away. Media accounts at the time claim he stated he heard a voice telling him to get out of the car immediately or he would die. Isaac told team owner Bud Moore to get a relief driver ready, came into the pits, climbed out of his car, and went home. As soon as he got a telephone after climbing from the car, he called his wife and told her about it. According to his second wife, Patsy, quote, as soon as he got out of the car and was able to get to a telephone, because we didn't have cell phones then, he called me and repeated to tell me exactly what had happened to him in the car. He said a voice told him that he needed to get out of the car, and so he radioed to Bud Moore. He said, find somebody to fill in the car. I've got to get out. I don't know what that experience was. I don't know if he felt it, 
I don't know if he felt it was an intuition or if it was actually a verbal voice. I know that it impacted him enough that he was not going to stay in the race car. But even after that whole unusual fiasco, he was still credited with finishing in the 13th position out of the 50 drivers. But even after his unusual walk-off, Isaac would return to racing. But sometimes in life, it's best to go with your gut, or in this case, go with what you hear, because it may bite you in the end. Isaac would not run another cup race in 1973, but he did come back for 19 starts in the following two years, including one last go around at Talladega. His final cup series start came in the 1976 World 600 at Charlotte Motor Speedway, finishing a disappointing 38th place finish due to an engine failure, and he would eventually retire from cup series racing and focus only on the short tracks. However, four years and one day after his spooky scene at Talladega, fate would have plans for Isaac. Isaac was running in the NASCAR late model Winston 200 at Hickory Motor Speedway and was running in fourth place when it seemed as if history was repeating itself once again as he drove to pit road and called for a release driver. But the circumstances was much more different this time around. He wasn't asking for a relief driver because he heard voices. This situation was far grimmer. Isaac would collapse after suffering apparent heat exhaustion with 40 laps to go in the race. Weather reports for the area that day showed temperatures that had reached 91 degrees Fahrenheit at mid-afternoon and were still around 80 degrees at the time of Isaac's collapse. Ned Jarrett, one of Isaac's friends, said that he collapsed when he got out of the car. When he was taken to the hospital, Isaac was revived and talked to friends before suffering a relapse. He seemed to be doing very well. We thought he would do all right. And then about midnight, he suffered cardiac arrest. Unfortunately, Isaac was not able to recover from that incident, as Bobby Isaac was pronounced dead at hospital at 12.45 a.m., with the official cause of death being a heart attack due to heat exhaustion. Bobby Isaac will go down as one of the more interesting names in NASCAR. He also will go down as one of the more underrated names in NASCAR. He's a 2016 member of the NASCAR Hall of Fame, but if you think about champions and great race car drivers, more than likely you won't hear of Bobby Isaac. Unfortunately for Bobby Isaac's career, if you do hear the name, you're more than likely going to hear about this event. Unfortunately in life for some people, the most memorable moment of your life, the one that people will remember you by, is something that you don't want anyone to find out. It was an unfortunate end to Bobby Isaac's career and life, but that day in the southern Alabama air in August of 1973 will go down as one of the more unusual moments in NASCAR's 75-year history. And like I said at the beginning, it's common for drivers to retire for the more obvious reasons like age, injuries, or overall wanting to do something different. Well, for Bobby Isaac, he chose a different route and did it his way, even if it was very weird. Was it maybe Larry Smith the voice that Bobby Isaac was hearing? We'll never know. When you hear this story, you may think it's absolutely insane and crazy, and while that is understandable, for NASCAR fans, that's just Talladega. Talladega.